Welcome to the Mentors and Moguls podcast. I'm your host, Heather Stone. I bring you mentors and moguls from all around the world, different walks of life, from creatives to CEOs to business leaders to top athletes and all kinds of other people in between. If you like our episode today, all of our podcasts are available on our YouTube channel. Please go ahead and subscribe and comment. We'd love to hear your feedback. Carol Inspector is my special guest, and her motto is how to be relentlessly positive and manifest your vision into reality. Well, Carolyn is walking the walk. She is currently the CEO of Spectre Philanthropic Advisors, but in her past, she has dedicated her life to helping others. She has a law degree from Boston University's School of Law and also Northwestern University. She's a graduate of the School of Criminal Justice. So please sit back and enjoy the conversation on Manifesting with Carol Inspector. Hello and welcome to the Mentors and Moguls podcast. I'm your host, Heather Stone. Today we have a wonderful surprise for you. We've got a repeat mentor with an update that I think you'll find very exciting. This is Carol Inspector. She's the CEO of Spectre Philanthropic Advisors. And this is what we're talking about today, how to be relentlessly positive and manifest your vision into reality. Welcome, Carolyn. Thank you, Heather. I'm so excited to be here again with you. I'm happy to be speaking with you, and I'm even happier to be sharing your story of positivity and manifestation. So last time we talked, it was before the pandemic. Your career is amazing. We talked about a little bit about that on the top of the show. People can see your previous interview. This woman, don't let the nice exterior fool you. She is a badass at heart. So go ahead and take a look at her credits. But we're going to talk about reinventing yourself and how to find happiness at any point in your life. Carolyn, you I ran into you a while ago. You've never looked better. You've never sounded better. I know you're, you've not been happier. What is the secret? Take me back to the pandemic, how you were feeling, what led to now and this amazing transformation. It's been quite a story, Heather, and I'm so excited to be able to share it with you. And if I could give anybody hope, it makes me so happy because when we last met, I was in an okay place, but not a great place. And I never in a million years expected what has happened to me happened. So I hope to be the poster child for many people who, you know, just don't think that the right thing is going to be happening for them. So the last time we met, I was the CEO of the Juhi Ash Center. I it was a wonderful integrative medical center. Uh, when the pandemic hit, the center was forced to close, and I was living in New York City. Um, I was a widow, as we talked about. My husband had died a few years prior, and I was with my single mother to my 15-year-old daughter, and I had a large dog who had to go outside many times, and it was scary, you know, going from the 16th floor down. One of my doormen very early on passed away from COVID, and oh. I was terrified, um, you know, by myself. We didn't know what was going to happen. You know, I, I thought, God forbid, something should happen to me. My daughter's going to be by herself. And it was really, really scary. So I'm originally from Boston. I have a lot of friends in Boston and they have homes on Cape Cod. And one of my dear friends said, if you get scared, just go to my house at the Cape. And basically one week in February, I got scared. We decided to leave and I figured we'd be gone for a couple of weeks. Well, six months later, while we're still on Cape Cod, I decided that I did not want to go back to New York City. I saw what was happening and I decided to move back to Newton, Massachusetts, where I'm from, and to buy a house there. But this was not a calm, pleasant time for me. You know, I had to find a new school for my daughter. She was about to be a junior in high school. I had to find some kind of employment situation for myself and find a safe home to keep us calm during COVID. Uh, so I was able to continue working remotely with the Dewey Ash Center for um, the next two years, actually. Um, moved into this beautiful new home where I'm from. All my wonderful old friends are here. So I started finally healing. You know, this had now been four years since my husband passed away, which brings me to last year. And I finally woke up. It was right after New Year's of January 2021. And I said, okay, hey, this is my year to finally take care of myself. I honestly didn't care prior to that. I gained almost 60 pounds while I was taking care of my terminal ill husband. And the menopause certainly adds uh, an issue with weight gain as well um, during your 50s. So um, I had gained 60 pounds and I didn't care. And then I woke up one morning right after the new year and I said, okay, it's time to start caring about myself. Because I realized unless I took care of myself and loved myself again, 
no one else, whether it was a friend or a professional career or a romantic vision would love me. So I needed to take care of myself. So I spent an entire year literally reinventing myself. So I need to interrupt you there because you make it sound so easy. I moved back home in the middle of pandemic. You faced four scary things in a row with uncertainty, uncertainty, uncertainty. And most people, when they have to, to pivot and they're faced with uncertainty, that's when the wheels come off the bus, right? When we, when we do all kinds of things and we slip into dark places, what helps you sustain? Did things fall into place? Did you put things out into the universe? I need a home. I need a job. I need yep. this and that. How can you tell me a little bit about your mindset and your thought process for those difficult times when you were really terrified? Absolutely. I remember sitting at my friend's home on the Cape. It was in the middle of the winter. It was February. And it's a beautiful home, but it's in the middle of nowhere. And I was scared. You would hear the coyotes and the owls. But I had to put on a front because my 15-year-old daughter was with me at the time. And I had to be brave for her. And she was very angry with me that I took her out of her world that she knew and loved. She didn't want to be on the Cape. But at that point, all of her other friends were all over the country too doing things. So it wasn't so bad. But I, I put a hierarchy of things that I knew needed to happen if this was the right move for me. So the okay. first was being able to get Lexi, my daughter, into a school. I didn't want to throw her into a public school here in Massachusetts because she had come from a private school in New York City. And I just figured that's not fair. So okay. if I was going to move, that was my first sign to me. You know, if I can get her into an appropriate school, then I'm supposed to move her. Then mm -hmm. I figured, okay, let's try to work on a remote job and then let's worry about a home. So I had a plan in mind. And sure enough, Lexi gets accepted to the school that I went to on my mother's birthday. My mother had passed away two years prior. So I'm like, what better sign is there than that? Yes. And I get signs all the time from my husband. And my mother. So I knew for sure, April 28th, she gets into Beaver, she's going to Beaver. Okay, so now let's set the next plan. In motion. So I talked to my employers and I was able to tell them, you know, I've decided I'm moving back to Boston, but I really want to continue working with you. And after several weeks of negotiation, we figured out a plan. And then I called a friend who was a realtor and I just started looking at houses and I'm like, let's find a house for myself. So, you know, it was just, it was meant to be, you know, the universe does what it's supposed to do. And we had a very similar experience recently with Lexi trying to get into college and, you know, exactly what we thought we wanted. We did it. Something completely different happened. And now we firmly believe it was the right thing. So you have to just believe in the universe. Okay. But you, you obviously have to take the human footsteps, but believing. And so for everyone that's sitting out there questioning and self-doubting, as we all do, don't second guess because like you said, she was denied from what you thought was the right thing, but the right thing worked out happening after all. You said, thank goodness we didn't go with that first choice. Absolutely. It always, it always works that way, but it's hard to know when you're in the thick of trauma and terror. It's really hard to see that and, and say, okay, I'm going to stay strong. But for me, one of the things I've learned, like the overarching concept that gets me through stuff is love. And this was the love of my daughter. You know, I need to be strong for her. I couldn't fall apart. I needed to be there to support her. And even though she believed that this was the wrong decision, I knew that this was the right decision. For her. Wow. And finally, you know, two years later, she's like, you know, mom, you did the right thing. But sometimes you have to do, you have to go, always go with your instinct and you have to believe in yourself. But sometimes the people around you aren't always going to support that decision. But if you firmly believe that this is the right choice, eventually the people in your world will understand that and, and come to see that you did do the right thing. So don't question yourself when your instincts tell you that this is the right thing to do. Love it. Love it. Love it. Okay. So let's bring you up. You've got your housing. She's got a school. You've got a, a employment. There's yes. a few more, more things that happened to you from 2020, 2021 on. What, tell us about so I that. I took a year and just decided to take care of myself. I built a gym in my home. Yes. I had worked out in 10 years. So I built a very simple gym, but I had three different kinds of cardio equipment and weights. And I met with a nutritionist that I worked with at the Integrative Medical Center that I ran. And I have a sweet tooth and I'm a car bed. So I knew that I couldn't go on a diet. I needed to find a new way of eating where I could satisfy my needs, but also take the caloric intake that I needed to lose the weight. So that's what I did. You know, she told me on all kinds of different foods that, you know, this is company um, that makes the best challah bread, you know, that I die for. And you can eat it because it's really high in fiber and low in calories and carbs. So 
little tweaks like that and skinny cow ice cream bars are like my go-to thing these days. Okay. I need something sweet. So um, I figured out how to eat what I wanted, but lose the weight. So over a year, I lost 58 pounds. So it was quite exciting. And, um, you know, people, my close friends, like, did you do liposuction? Like, how did you do it? What did you do? And I'm like, no, I did nothing. I had no plastic surgery, nothing. I just committed myself to eating healthy and exercising every day. And I feel like I'm 30 years old. I'm about to be 61 next week. And I feel like I'm 30. You had a lot of energy when I interviewed you a few years ago, but now you're just like, you're like a 20 year old bouncing around. I absolutely love it. I don't wait to come to Boston and see you skipping down the street. That's going to be, oh, that's Carolyn. Yep. So then once I lost the weight and I started loving myself again, I woke up again one day and I said, you know what? I think I want to start dating again. And I never thought I would date again. You know, I just didn't have it in me. And so I went on match. But I'd been on Match before. I met my husband on Match in 1999. So I knew it could work. And I cannot tell you how many horrible dates I had over the course of the year. I started dating February 20th of 2021. And, um, you know, the first date, the guy told me he was 5'7". And I'm 5'5", five five, so 5'7 five is way too short for me to begin with. But he seemed like a nice guy. He had to have been 5'3" if I'm being generous. Okay. And it just went, you know, too old, too cranky, too young, too, you know, it just was one wrong thing after another. And then I met somebody in the fall who was not very good to me, but I was obsessed with him. And I, I felt like I was 16 again, like just doing stupid things, like letting him treat me badly and just chasing him. And I'm like, what is the matter with you, Carolyn? Why are you doing this? You know better. And I finally, after a couple of months, said, I can't do this anymore. I'm just going to take a break. And then a couple of weeks later, I went on match and I met the man of my dreams. Oh, my good. OK, so did you know this is the guy or here we go again, buckle up, whatever it's going to be? What was your first thought when you're getting ready for that first date? It was so funny because I remember um, we only spoke once on the phone, but he's such a super nice guy. And I was pretty comfortable going. And I remember walking down the stairs of my house saying, I so hope that this is my last first date. Like how amazing would it be if this could be the situation? Sure enough, it was. Here you go. Oh my gosh. And I can, I, I mean, you're just like oozing with energy and happiness. You smile nonstop, which is hilarious. I can tell you there's a thunderstorm and there's a flood coming. You'd probably laugh about it. No, my friends remark all the time. Like we've never seen you so happy. Like we're so happy for you. No, it really is. I can't help it. It just shows. I am thrilled for you. So manifesting, do you think anybody can manifest when you're in a dark place? Because you've been in really dark places before. Do you think anybody at any age can manifest? And do they need to put a timeline on it? Can you give them like a step one, two, three for manifesting for beginners? No, absolutely. I never manifested anything before until I started working at this integrative medical center. And then I started working with people who understood the importance of energy and sending energy out into the universe and getting it back. And I believed it. And so it's only been in like the last five years that I've even tried to do it. I'm not a big person who does yoga and meditation, but I do deep breathing. And I remember sitting out in my backyard. I have a very lovely, calm place in the backyard to sit. And it was the Jewish holidays. I'm Jewish. And I did not go to temple. It was COVID. And I was just trying to, um, say my own kind of prayers, not any traditional prayer, but just, I remember looking up in the universe and it's a very special time between the new year and Yom Kippur. And that's the time where you set out into the universe, what your intentions are. So I just remember looking up at this beautiful blue sky and saying to myself, what is it that I want? And I said, I want love again. And I want to have a new successful career. And both of those things happened. You know, but it, it's it's nothing more than deciding who you are, what you want, and really just thinking about it and focusing it, focusing on it. But you have to take steps. You have to work hard at getting it. I mean, I worked for a year on match. It's a job to try to find the right thing. So it's not like he just walked into my life one day and that was that. Like it was a year of planning, prepping, and the universe getting me ready for him. I wouldn't have been ready to have met me. I would not have been ready to meet him. A day before the day I met him, because I needed to 
heal, have other relationships and be ready. So you just have to understand what you want. First of all, that's the first step. What is it that you want? Mm -hmm. Because not everybody knows what they want. And if you don't know what you want, manifest the concept of someone up above helping you figure out what you want. Like that then should be your step one. There you go. There you go. Well, I think manifesting is, is really big. I am a big promote, proponent of doing it. And I've been a naysayer for many years. And then once I started really tapping in and focusing on that and realizing, oh, A, B equals C, I got it with the manifesting. Then you're like, why didn't I do this before? I've been banging my head against the wall. Why didn't I try it? It's so simple. It's free. Why didn't I try this before? But I think that's the message to a lot of people out there saying it is that simple and there is no prerequisite to doing it. Um, you just have to focus on it and you have to trust, trust your gut, but you have to trust and you have to shut down all the naysayers out there because it's not their journey. It's yours, right? Exactly. Yeah. You, you really can. I mean, you can go to your friends for guidance and support and I would do that. You know, I would walk a lot during COVID outside with my friends. That was the one activity where we felt comfortable being together and I'd get four completely different sets of advice from mm-hmm. four different friends. And it's great to get that advice and counsel, but you have to go with your instincts. And that's part of the problem. I think so many women don't listen to their instincts. Your gut is going to tell you what you need and what you want and listen to that. No, you have an inner voice for a reason. That's right. That's right. Well, I'm waiting. I told you um, before this, I'm waiting for you to write your book and your book to come out because your story is amazing. We're only touching a little bit of it, folks. You need to to look her up, go to the other podcast uh, that I've got with Carolyn to really understand that this woman has done amazing things. And I think one of the most respectable, inspiring and moving parts about, I'll say your bio, your body of work to date is that you focused on everyone else, but yourself, you have helped so many people around the world, people, you don't even know what this woman has done. And so the fact that you said, it's my turn to work on myself. I just went, yes, you so deserve this. So take a look at her complete bio. So Carolyn, um, I think you know this, that we've got a great setting intentions first of the year retreat coming up. I've never before offered this. I've done this every year and I've, I've been able to manifest amazing things for myself in my own journey. doesn't matter to anyone else because that's really all that you care about, right? What do you want out of life before you kick it, right? So um, if you go to heatherrstone.com slash rejuvenate 2023, you'll be able to come and, and maybe meet Carolyn there. We're trying to woo her to come uh, because she's so inspiring and it's so contagious. And you can sign up too for this wonderful retreat where we're going to set intentions and you're going to hear from powerhouse women like Carolyn um, talking a little bit more in depth about how they got to where they are. So Carolyn, what is next for you um, in your happiness world on a rainbow out there with unicorns and candy everywhere? Well, it's not that amazing, but so I'm about to become an empty nester. So that's a really big thing for me. I have an only child. She's about to go to Colgate University in August, which we're really excited about. And so I'm preparing myself again. I'm starting to set some intentions for myself of how to manage this because she's my best friend. And we have a very unusual mother-daughter relationship because of the journey that we went through with my husband's brain cancer journey. Mm -hmm. So we're super close and we're both nervous about missing one another. You know, and so we're trying to figure that out. But thankfully, I met this wonderful man who has a home in Mexico and a home on a lake in New Hampshire. So I'm sort of balancing traveling with him and, you know, being with her, which is a lot of fun. But I also did start a a company called Spectre Philanthropic Advisors, where I am doing consulting services to nonprofits because I have a lengthy background in doing nonprofit work. And I feel that I need to use my, you know, knowledge and passion for the nonprofit world to help. So I do a lot of pro bono work and I'm just excited, you know, remotely being able to, you know, work with some organizations in New York that, that I feel deeply about. Well, I think you're just getting started to be honest with you. I really do. And I can't wait to see what you do next. Um, I can't wait for people to come and hopefully see you there at the retreat and talk to you personally, because like I said, she has done so many things with her career. You've reinvented yourself. You've added on to your career, but the body of work that you have done in the name of serving others is absolutely amazing. 
uh, not to mention your entire law career, which we'll get into at another time. Carolyn, it has been lovely talking to you. Thank you for sharing your own, your own personal journey. I think everyone will be inspired listening to you. And I can't wait to see you in person and skip down the street with you. I look forward to it, Heather. Thank you so much for chatting with me. You're welcome. Thanks so much for tuning into the Mentors and Moguls podcast. If you enjoyed today's episode, rate and review this interview and share it with a friend who could benefit from today's guest. You can find bonus video episodes at mentorsandmogulspodcast.com or check out our events page and our blog at heatherrstone.com. Until next time, make it a great day. Thank you.